praising the Lord. We are together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. Come on, let's stand. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Oh, won't it be a time? We're gonna sing and shout, dance about. Let me hear you. When we get over yonder, we gotta sing and shout, dance about. When we get over yonder, we gotta sing and shout, dance about. When we get over yonder, oh, won't it be a time? I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by and by, by and by. We gonna come on, church, sing it. We gonna walk. We gonna walk those streets of glory. We gonna sing redemption stories. We gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. One more time. We gonna walk those streets of glory by and by, by and by. We gonna walk those streets of glory by and by, by and by. We gonna walk. We gonna sing. We gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. Some glad morning all together. Some glad morning when this life is over. I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. A home on God's celestial shore. I will fly away. Come on, do that. This I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, i fly away. When I die, hallelujah, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I will fly away. Sign me up. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name, write my name on the roll. I've been changed, I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I'm gonna be ready when Jesus comes. Sign me up one more time all together. the Christian to believe, write my name on the road, I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me, I'm gonna be ready when Jesus comes, cause I'm gonna sing, 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 cause I'm gonna sing, 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 and I'm gonna shout. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout, praise the Lord, oh when the gates are open wide, I'm gonna sit by Jesus' side, I'm gonna sing, 
I'm gonna shout, praise the Lord. Oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints, the saints, shout, shout, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout, praise the Lord, oh, Lord, I want to be. Christ so real, 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 Christ so real to me, I love him because he gives us the victory, many people doubt him, but I can't do without him, that is why I love him so, I love that man. I love that man from Galilee, for he has done so very much for me. He has taken all my sins, he has taken all my sins, and let the Holy Ghost come in. I love that man, that man from Galilee. One more time, I love that
comes to us, we say, Father in heaven, or we love you. We lift your name in our view, and may your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty word, that together we refrain. Blessed be the Lord. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises as your people.
we have two of you on the way. We're going to ask the brother Paulus and the brother Herman to join us in the platform. We're going to ask the brother Urshel to pray for us. Because we are all men. Feet of clay. For you to the clay, you say, I want to show you. But they need your prayers. So we're going to ask him to join the platform as our brother Urshel asks God's blessing and guidance. These are the men who have been guiding the spiritual, social, the entire welfare that relates to the church and church development. They need your prayer. Boys, look to the Lord for the blessing upon the elders. Father, we come humbly before you this morning. We thank you again for your greatness to us, for your greatness towards this church, this assembly, this community. And Father, we want to bring to you in a very special way this morning the elders. Father, we ask, we, we ask that they will be reminded of your holy word this morning as we seek your blessing upon them. As you have said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, it will be granted. So Lord, we ask that you will continue to bless them and guide them and that they'll produce fruit. In a very special way, Lord, we'd like to ask that you will give them wisdom as they lead this congregation, as they lead the community. We ask that you'll give them wisdom in making decisions. That the decisions will not be based on just the mere thinking, but it will be based on your direction. Wisdom in making decisions, wisdom in guiding the flock, wisdom in making policies and carrying out practices, we ask for that special guidance from yourself. We ask, Lord, that you will bless them with your love, the love that will, that's first shed abroad in their hearts. This love will go towards, again, the congregation, their families, the community. Father, we pray that others will not just see the love, others will feel that love. Then, Lord, we ask that you will give them long suffering and tolerance as they deal with a variety of personalities, a variety of characters, not only within this assembly, but in the community, and people that they have to deal with. Some people get out of hand, some people like do not move with wisdom and understanding. And so we ask that you give them long suffering. For those who may not like them because of a policy or because of a practice or because of who they are, we ask that you give them that long suffering and tolerance. And we pray that you give the congregation the same long suffering and tolerance and patience to know that these are the people you have set over them to guide them. Lord, we pray that through everything in all, through everything, Jesus Christ will be honored in all things. He will have the preeminence, the first place. He will be Lord. And all the plans, policies, will all go to lift up our Lord Jesus, that he will be glorified, and souls will come to know the Lord Savior. Father, give them that love for souls. As they move into the community and to reach others, we pray, Lord, that souls will be saved as a result of their work. And then, Lord, as we pray for them, we want to remember their families. We pray, Lord, that you bless their families as their families reflect the love and guidance and peace from yourself to the congregation and to the community. 
Lord, we ask that there will be unity within this assembly. We ask that you'll provide in every way, financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. And especially through this time of pandemic, decisions have to be made, policies have to be made. We ask that in all things, again, our Lord Jesus, to be honored and lifted up. We thank you so far that you have been guiding, you have been leading, and in as much as the others may not agree with everything, Lord, we thank you that through it all, Jesus is having control. Father, so bless them. We commit them into your hand again for another day, another week, another month, another year. And through all the time that you have selected them and chosen them to do this work, we commit them into your hand that they will rest completely in your care and your guidance. Lord, without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. So Lord, bless them in every way. We commit them into your hand in a very special way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Brother Kersha. And so the hymn 93, number 93. Who's ever here shouts out the song? That's the effort and intent of the elders of this assembly to spread the good news around, the gospel message around. And so we ask that again, Elder Smith to come and to lead us in this beautiful song that speaks so eloquently of the effort and intent of the leadership and those who fellowship at this local assembly. Number 19. Yeah. 
Taylor's birthday was Wednesday, now 30, and our daughter Maya, you don't see her here because she's well a part of the Maranatha family. She is in the nursery and she's 10. And we really thank you for, for inviting us. Thank you for having us here at Maranatha to share with you again. Um, it's always an always an awesome responsibility and a humbling feeling to, to share with the people of God about the Word of God. Let's just pray. Indeed, we thank you, God, for another day. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for the time that we can come out and hear from you, and Lord, even over the internet, we can we can listen. And we pray, God, that as your word is spoken, that it will be only from you. We pray, God, that truly you will change lives. That, Lord, each of us will be affected. And that lives will be, will be saved. That backslide as we return to you. And, Lord, may your name be glorified in all we do and all we say. In Jesus' name. I'm going to read from a, a very familiar passage to us, Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 11, and I'm reading from the NIV, and it says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons, the younger one said to his father, father, Give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the, the parts that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music near music and dance. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what, what was going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fucking car because he was, he has, him, he has him back safe and so on. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went, went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never give me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, You are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is gone. 
Amen. What a read. What a story. What a parable. You know, some years ago on, on television, they had this, this program. For those of us who watch sports, where are they? Where are they now? And it was really about those sports people who, who did well. And they retired and got older. And, you know, nobody even thought about many of them. It was really a good program. I don't know why they stopped. But they sought them out and they, they found them and they interviewed them and told their story again. And for those of us who, who, who watch, the, watch those shows, we felt connected with that person again. Amen? We felt connected because we, we, we saw what was happening with them now. And it gave perspective. And this morning we want to look at this passage and we're going to di dissect it. And my topic is, where are you now? Because many times, many times we have people within our, our assembly. They come and they're excited and they're serving God and then after a time, they disappear. You don't see them again. And you know, some of us will know this term, YOLO. You only live once. So that's the, that's the term out there now. You only live once. The people at that time, they, get, they want to go and enjoy themselves, enjoy life, and they consider church and church service boring. And they want to go live. And I want to suggest that the prodigal son wanted the same thing. He was in his private house. And I want, I, I want to point out something key. It was the what? The younger son. Two sons. And the younger one wanted to go live in life. And he said, Verse 11. Verse 12. The, the younger son, the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. So the father gave him everything that was for him. Now in some further reading, we find out that the, the younger son would have gotten one third of the father's estate. And the older son of God took her. So the younger son took all, all of this and went out and lived it up. Verse 13 says he went to a distant country. He was far away from Maria as he could. So that not even the people in this community would see him. Because I'm living it up. I don't want anybody to see me. I don't know if you've ever been, to, been anywhere and you see somebody that used to come to church and they're probably doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. But you spot them from before you. But when they see you then, my sister Carol, oh yeah. Far country, distant. Nowhere near. I don't even want Uncle Billy to see me. Monthless brother all of us. I don't want anybody to see me while I'm living it up. I want everybody around me to not know about my former life so that they don't judge me based on what I'm doing now. Verse 13 says, Not long after this, the son got together all he had set out for a distant country. And squandered his wealth in wild living. Wild living. And you know, as quick as you get it, it goes. Spending all your friends, all your friends, you party, you live it up. And you have a lot of friends when you have a lot of money. But when you have nothing, there's nobody around. 
You know what is the beggars on the street don't have anybody around them? Nobody wants to be around you when you're at the bottom. Nobody's all coming and saying, hey, it's good to see you. Give me your family drive past. And verse 14 says, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine. The famine couldn't come when he had some money. You better use that. The famine couldn't come, I, I, even just before. But after everything went, the famine came. Wow. And that's usually the case. He never said there's a famine. No. It says a severe famine. That means there was nothing around. No money. And now I have no resources to get back anything. God like it is. I will move on. And he longed for pig feed. Really? Now, they say that pig feed was the lowest thing that a Jew would have. When you're at the lowest, that is what you could get. And if you read, somebody just look in the back what it says. Nobody gave you anything. You can't see it right there. Nobody gave him anything. They said these seeds, the pig feed that you were looking at was, was got car, carrot seeds. Coming a little pouch like thing. I think we have something like that in Jamaica. This long, um, will you see it? I don't know how to describe it, but it's a long thing. And it has some small seeds in there. I can break it and get the seeds up. Probably you can, I should have brought one to show you. One's here now? Okay. So it was the lowest possible humiliation. I will move on. And verse 15 says, verse 17, sorry. When he came to his senses, When he came to his senses, he said, How oh, many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. From riches to rags, from everything to nothing. Nobody knew that he, he had everything in the world. He was at rock bottom. And he came to his senses, but I would say that there are a lot of people out there, there are a lot of backsliders who come to their senses. But they feel so ashamed that they don't return. I'm going to challenge us this morning as people of God. And you know, many times when they come to their senses, because God is here pricking them and talking to them right through, and saying, I want you back, I need you back. Even when we're praying for them. But sometimes when they come, let's move on. I am no longer, verse 18 says, I am no longer worthy to call your son. Make me one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. The most difficult thing to do is to realize that you're a rock bottom and to get up and go back with shame in your eyes. Why do you want to shame and say, hey, I'm going back to my house? I am going to serve God as I should. I am going to live for God. And I don't care. Because I was at my lowest and I realized that God was no longer near me. Because I took myself away to a distant land. You see when you are far away from God, you are the one who knew nothing. God is still there. And he 
And for those of us who are here, we need to understand that. That when people are away from God, God didn't move away from them. They chose to move away. But I dare say that God is right here. Anytime you're ready, you say, yeah, come. I'm ready for you. As far as I can say, you know, you're not wrong. You're good to go. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. What compassion? For him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. It's almost like the father was sitting there waiting for his son to come back. It says, while he was a long way off, he see him in the distance. And he ran to him. Compassion, sympathetic pity, and concern for the suffering or misfortune of others. Do we have that? Do we have that here in Maranatha? Do we have that, have that as Christians? Do we have compassion for people? Are we concerned with the sufferings and misfortunes of others? Ran to him, hoped him, and kissed him. You see, verses 21 to 22. It says, The son said to the father, Remember he had planned it. Father, remember he planned. He planned in verse Verse 18 and 19, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against him, heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your iron men. Verse 21 says, The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. If you know, he didn't get a chance to say, Make me one of your iron men. You don't see it. The father stopped him at the same time. The son didn't even want to be called a son anymore. He felt so ashamed. Many times people feel so ashamed that they all they want to do is come back and just be. All they want is that phone call and that text. On that visit, made me one of your hired men. Because he realized that the men that were working for his father was eating food and leaving soap. And he had not. So he'd rather be in a situation like that than the one he was presently in. But here is it. But the father said to him, his servants, quick! Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Whoa! Now the fattened calf was the choice, choices meat in the Jewish time. This is what you put down for those special events, those parties. Bring the fattened calf. Bring the best thing. Bring a robe, the best robe. No, only, only priests and men of high standing, illustrious men, wore robes in those days. Bring a ring. Ring, symbol of honor and dignity. Remember that this guy take up everything and gone. And sandals. Only men of rank had sandals to put on their feet. Regular people would go bare feet. So he came from zero and his father forgot all that he did. Remember that the 
first suggestion that the father didn't give anything to give him, give him his inheritance. He gave it to him and And he left. And he come back now and he give him everything. Let's move on. He said, let's have a party. Let's have a party. Let's celebrate. But the father said to his servant, verse 22, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost. And he's what? Mm. So they began to celebrate. And then comes the older son. Come on, talk about older son. Come on, son. What's, what's going on? Why do I have a party for you? Your brother, I know. What? I'm being there. Me a serve God, so me a live. I've been honest and true and everything. And in come now, I know like a I think a, I think a young car. And he's getting a I think a young goat and he get a fat car. And I'm here all the time. I, I can't get even that to party with my friends. But I'm going to turn up in this place. And many times people, people are returning and treating like this. The young lady gets pregnant. She comes back to the prison our baby. And we don't treat her like as if she it never happened. I don't know if you talk about mine after, but I'm sure you have my dad. Just as if nothing happened. Let's celebrate because the first time the turn, let's make it feel great, let's make it feel welcome.
have to celebrate and be glad because the brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Do you feel like a prodigal today? You see, for many years I thought a prodigal meant somebody would go away and return. I never took the time to look at it. the definition of prodigal. Prodigal actually means wasting what you have, wasting your wealth, so you can go and look at the definition. You feel like you've wasted what God has given you. No, it's a good time to return. No way. Everything that we consider as important, which is not, which was never important, shut down essentially. The party goers are shuffling. The people who watch sports, God help them. Like me. Everything we consider to be the thing. You have money and you don't even want to spend it because you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. You have to keep it so that if you lose your job tomorrow, you have something to work with. Because you don't want big people. There ever was a time when we know that serving God is the best thing to do. It's right now. Because nobody else, we've always said as a church that nobody else has the answer. Only Jesus has the answer. It is clear now. It is clear. I don't think anybody is struggling with that. Because in Europe now, they've gone back into lockdown. And the people are demonstrating and rioting in America. We know, the, we know the situation. They think it was the right time to come out and, you know, and go out that day. And everybody has to be returning back home. But I dare suggest today that Jesus is the answer. That is still true. And that remains true. And we must let people know there are a lot of people out there who used to serve God with all their hearts and they're not serving anymore. I want to encourage you when we leave here to call up somebody. Encourage them. Tell them that you love them with the love of the Lord. Tell them that Jesus wants them back and wants them back.
Amen. Yeah. 